Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn this watercolor, I don't know, I don't know how this transition's gonna go, we're gonna see, <laughs> into a vector. So here's the lowdown on raster versus vector images. Raster images are pixel-based, meaning that they're made up of tiny, tiny squares of color. So as you blow it up and those squares get bigger, you can tell, hence when things are pixelated like this. Vector images, on the other hand, are infinitely scalable. They are made up of points, curves, and lines based on a mathematical formula, meaning that whenever you blow it up, it is perfectly crisp and clean, whether it's one inch or 12 feet. So vectors are really great for retaining that crisp, neat look and for anything that needs to be super oversized. However, it is difficult to get true color variation and gradient the same way that you do in a raster image where you have each individual square being a different color in a vector because it's made up of, of curves and shapes. And so to give that watercolor effect, it makes a very complex vector image that usually is a pretty large file. But I'm gonna show you how to do this. So I'm working in Illustrator and I have this PNG file of the watercolor pulled onto an artboard and then I duplicated it a few times because I'm gonna show you a few different options you have when it comes to tracing. To convert it to a vector, I am going to use the image trace function, which you can access by going to the top menu and clicking window and then scrolling down and selecting image trace. And so when you pull it up, I automatically click the advanced options and then I'm gonna to go to these presets. Today we're going to start with the high fidelity photo and this is going to give us the most accurate vector version of the water raster watercolor. And so it's going to be as close to the original image while still vectorizing it. At the same time, this is going to be a huge complex file. So I'm gonna hit that and it takes a little bit to process, especially depending on how large and how many colors your image is. And now it's showing us a preview of what the actual vectorized result looks like, which looks really good. However, it is a lot of colors. It's using a full tone palette. You can see here it's 6,000 colors and a very complex image. But if you just want to have a high quality vector of your art and all you need it to do is be infinitely scalable, this will do the trick. And of course, when you zoom in close up, you can see these are all small little shapes. So it's basically a cleaner version of a raster image where it's pixels, but you can blow it up a lot bigger and maintain crisp lines. So I'm gonna do a couple things here. I make sure in the settings here that the method is checked to overlapping to create stacked paths. I wanna make sure that I'm only creating fills and all other settings as default. And then I'm gonna go up here and click expand. And that's our final image. And as you can see, it is an extremely complex image with a lot of points. This also has a white background. If I drag it off the artboard, you can see, and you can just select that to remove it. It also left me with a slight white outline here. So what I'm going to do is select it and then I'm going to use the eraser tool. And if I double click on the eraser tool, I have changed the size variation to be pressure sensitive. And then I'm just going to erase. You'll also notice that there are some of these small gaps and that means that Illustrator hasn't perfectly rendered these shapes to give complete coverage. And so what we're gonna wanna do is manually go in and fix them. I'm going to use the pencil tool, which you can access by hitting the key command N, or you can click here on the sidebar. And then I'm gonna select the shape and you can see just by drawing, it will increase the coverage of the shape. Next, we're going to do a more simplified version that still maintains a lot of this texture. So again, I'm going to select this rasterized image and I'm going to go to the preset panel. And this time I'm gonna select 16 colors for the preset. And so it's going to be a much more limited color palette than before. And it's not going to give me as realistic a watercolor look. However, this is a much less complex, very small file in comparison to the high fidelity image trace. 
settings. And here is where if you want, you can play around with some of these settings. You can increase or decrease the colors. For this particular bird, I have played around and I think 18 colors is the sweet spot. You can see it just cleans up the feathers a little bit more. And then again, I want to make sure that the paths are stacked. So I select overlapping. And then if I zoom in, you can kind of see what this looks like. Basically, the shapes are a lot larger. Uh, there's a lot fewer shapes than this one, but it still looks like a watercolor bird, albeit a much more simplified version. Now, I'm gonna show you what happens if I adjust some of these settings. The two that are going to really change the appearance are colors and noise. So you know what happens when I adjust colors. It will make it more complex and noise will do the same. If I increase noise to the maximum, which is 100 pixels, it's going to ignore any pixel groups that are really small. And so you can see the reflection in the eye is gone. It did reduce the size of the image, but to me, this doesn't look as good. And so I'm gonna reduce the noise back down. We're gonna stick put it at six and now that looks look a lot better so now i'm going to hit expand again and once again i'm going to erase these white parts and you can see the white background showing through in some places so again you can manually go in with the pencil tool and select these shapes and redraw to expand the coverage so there are no gaps or spaces so that's option two, which is a much smaller file. And then for the third setting, we're going to make a way more simplified version. So I'm gonna select it and I'm going to select six colors as my jumping off point. This is definitely too few colors because it completely left out the yellow and just changed it to gray. We're gonna go up to 15. Now this looks good. I can work with this number of colors. It doesn't look too different from this. And now, once again, I'm going to make sure that I have overlapping checked. And now I'm gonna hit expand and it's fully traced. And I am done tracing for this. So I'm going to exit out of this panel. And for these next steps, you want to make sure that you have the Pathfinder window open so that we can see all the detail. I'm gonna pull it off of the artboard, remove the white background, remove some of these white spots along the edge. Okay. so. I'm gonna hold command, select the whole bird, command and double click, and it brings it into an isolation mode. And now I am going to individually select each group of colors that are in this, starting with the darkest. So I'm going to select this dark, dark gray, and I'll show you how to reach this from the top menu bar. I have set a key command that I highly recommend that you do because it really makes it faster, but you can click on one colored object and then go to the select menu on the top bar and then go down to same. And in this menu that pops up, you're going to select fill color. And you can see my key command that I've set is command shift apostrophe. And then it selects everything in this isolation group that is this color. And now I'm going to do two things. I'm going to hit command G to group this. And then I am going to click on this stroke, which is there's currently no stroke, and then it's going to come up and suggest a stroke color that is the same as the fill color, and I'm gonna select that. And then I am going to reduce the stroke weight to 0.5. You might have to change what yours is. And I'm going to make sure that my corners are round, and I'm gonna go ahead and choose a round cap as well, just in case. So this way we won't get any weird sharp angles. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this for all of the colors. So select the next darkest color, command shift apostrophe, and then command G to group it. Change the stroke to the same color as the fill color, 0.5 weight, which is a rounded corner, rounded end cap, deselect, and so on and so forth. And if you look in the layers panel, you can see a lot of these are now out of order. There's no reflection in the eye because that is underneath. So if you want, as you're doing this, you can send them backwards. I am going to wait until I have more of these grouped to start playing with the order of my layers. 
Okay, so now when you look in my layers panel here, under the larger group of the bird in this isolation mode, I have all of the colors separately grouped into one. And so what I can start to do is play around with the order of my layers. And you can choose, if you can't see in this tiny thumbnail which color you're selecting, if you select this small circle, it will select the entire group here on the board. And because this is a lighter color, I am going to drag this upward. And then this one is really light. If I select that, you can see this is yellow. I'm fine with that being on the top. This blue, I want to move down below some of these other blues. My next step is to simplify this down. So we outlined the stroke so there would be more overlap so that when we do this next step, there are going to be fewer holes and therefore less manual work. So I am going to select everything in the group and we're gonna go up on the top menu bar to object, then down to path and then simplify. We're going to click these three dots for more options and I am going to adjust and make the curve a little more complex and the corner point a little sharper because we don't wanna completely lose the texture of the artwork, but we do want to simplify these points down. And you can see now this is like a third of the size. So it is a lot smaller, a lot more simplified image, which is exactly what we want. And if I click show original path, you can see in red how much more complex it is and hit okay. So now what I wanna do is close up these gaps. To make it really clear where the gaps are, I am going to draw a box, fill it with bright red and send it to the very back. I'm gonna use the pencil tool to have less of it around because I cannot focus on my artwork with how bright this is. But then when I zoom in, it's really clear to see where these gaps are and where I need to close them. I'm just gonna hit N and select the shape that I am going to draw on. And you just want to connect at the beginning and the end to the path and it will automatically redraw following your pencil. And I don't wanna alter the shapes too much. I wanna make this as little work as possible while still making it look good. So here we've lost the shape of the eye. So I am going to select each elements that make up the eye by clicking inside the shapes so that they're fully selected and I'm holding shift as I'm selecting them. And then I'm going to cut this out by holding command X. These little bits I don't need either. So I'm just gonna delete them. And then I'm gonna hit command V and it's going to paste the eye directly on top. I am going to also group those together. So that is always going to stay on top. And I'm also going to, while I'm here, I'm gonna hit M, which is the smooth tool. And this is similar to the pencil tool, but it doesn't actually follow the line that you draw. It just smooths out the shape of the path. And I'm going to make this look a little nicer by just clicking and drawing along the path. Give the bird a little bit of a crisper look to the eye. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going back to my pencil tool and continuing to close up these shapes. Once I am confident that I've closed all the gaps, I'm going to delete this red background. And now I am going to make all of these groups compound paths. This is just gonna make it more of a cohesive file to work with. To make it a compound path, I am just going to select each group and hit Command 8. And the only one that I'm not going to do this to is the eye because a compound path needs to be one color and I don't want to eliminate the rest of the reflection in the eye. So here is the finished product. You can see as we go down in lesser and lesser amounts of detail, we're also going down in file complexity. So those are three different ways that you could turn your watercolor into vectors. 
it's worth noting that 90% of what I sell for watercolor clip art is raster based. I do not vectorize the majority of my files and there is not as much demand for vectorized watercolor because the scale that a lot of people are using your clip art on is invitations, posters, cards, web graphics, things that don't need to be blown up big. So if this all sounded really daunting or you just like don't want to, don't let it be a hold up to you getting your shop off the ground. You can definitely get away with not vectorizing anything. This is just if you want. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been making this series on selling clip art online and there are several videos in the series if you haven't seen them yet. I also have a link in the description where you can download my Procreate brushes, my Procreate canvases, all kinds of goodies, all for free and subscribe for more. I am making new videos weekly. So excited to share this stuff with you and get you started on your passive income journey. It has been life-changing for me and I'm excited for it to potentially impact you as well. 